So I've got my hands on one of the newest releases from Google, the Pixel 7a. And although this is meant to be considered more of a mid-range priced phone, but from the specs, it is almost on par with Google's flagship phone, the Pixel 7. Starting off with unboxing the phone, when I ordered it, Google had an offer where you can get a free limited edition phone case, as well as an extra 150 Australian dollars to spend in the Google store. Peeling these stickers off and opening the top off, we can see that the Pixel 7a does look very similar to the Pixel 7, with that distinctive metal visor across the top and the camera pill outline. I didn't want to get the black or white colours, so I chose a C colourway, which is still a bit plain. The phone actually has a plastic back compared to the Pixel 7, where the back is glass, but it still has that glossy look to it. The sides have this matte aluminium material which definitely makes it nicer to hold and to have that more premium user experience. Inside the rest of the box we have a USB-C to USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-A adapter, which I'm assuming makes it easier to transfer files from other domains, a SIM ejector tool, and the usual papers. Turning on the phone and doing the usual procedures, setting up my fingerprint was very easy. The sensor is great, obviously not as quick as the Samsung Lightning Fast fingerprint sensor, but if it works well, then what else do you need? This Pixel 7a is actually the first Pixel A series phone to introduce face unlock, which was previously only available on the flagship Google phones. So opening up the case, it's got a pretty cool packaging, nothing special. It's made out of plastic and a cool design on the back and obviously it fits the phone perfectly. This phone has a 6.1 inch flat display, 1080p, and it can also go up to a refresh rate of 90Hz, but by default it's capped at 60Hz, so just make sure you turn on the smooth display feature in the settings. It has the Google Tensor G2 chip and 8 gigs of RAM, Gorilla Glass 3, and a 4385mAh battery. It can also support up to 18 watts wire charging, but only 7.5 watts of wireless charging, which is still quite slow, but it's better than no wireless charging at all. In the past years, I think as far as the Google Pixel 2 until the Pixel 6a, Google has always used the really popular IMX363 12 megapixel sensor for its camera. But the Pixel 7a has a 64 megapixel main camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide and a 13 megapixel front facing camera. But I noticed when taking photos that the 64 megapixel main camera actually goes down to 16 megapixels. And there's no way to change that in the camera settings, which kind of sucks, but you're still getting good photos. Ignore the laundry blowing into my face, but for the price range, you're getting great quality photos. And it's quite distinctive that these photos are from a Pixel phone. They tend to have a bit more contrast compared to other phones, and you guys can enjoy my dog as a subject for most of these photos. It has a 1.9 max aperture, so you can get those really nice close-up photos with that aesthetic background and shallow depth of field. And also, this is great for photos at night or low light conditions. I heard about Google's magic eraser and how you can literally remove any unwanted object from your photo, and Google will use AI to essentially do that. So I tested it out with this photo where you can see I purposely place a lamp on the grass and notice this watering can behind, and with the magic eraser, I've successfully gotten rid of both of these items. It doesn't look too bad, but I will admit this is pretty amazing stuff. The ultrawide camera is pretty good too, but there is some minor distortion in the corners of these photos, which to me is quite noticeable, but still a very good range of colours. The selfie camera is overall very good, uh, I didn't really test it that much, but I don't have any complaints, so good job from Google. Let's talk about the price. It costs 750 Australian dollars, and you do get a $150 voucher to spend at Google, along with that which is about enough to buy yourself a pair of Google earbuds. Plus, you do get a limited edition case, but if we're comparing it to the price of the Pixel 7, which is 999 Australian dollars, for that extra $150, you're getting flagship specs, a better camera on the back and the front, and the Pixel 7 supports both 20 watts wide and wireless charging. It has a glass back, and I also think the vessels along the side of the phone are thinner, just all these little things that add up to make the average user experience a bit more premium. You could even find the Pixel 7 on sale from time to time if you do look hard enough. Nonetheless, I do think that the Pixel 7a is right in the middle of the pack when it comes down to Google phones. 
it has amazing specs for its price, and that's what makes it one of the best mid-range smartphones out there on the market at the moment. Let me know what you guys think, and see you in the next one. Peace.